Let's do number 126 out of the Hibbler text. So this one is going to make us find the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section of the frame at points F, which is here, and point G. Okay, and it tells us the contact here at E is smooth, so we don't have to worry about friction, so that's nice. Okay, now what we have to do when we want to find internal loadings, remember, is we've got to make a section cut at the point we're looking at. So I need to section this here, and then we'll need a section here. Okay, now what do we need to do first though? All right, so we know we got to look at these um, regions. We got to figure out if we want to use this side or this side, this side or this side, right? So you've got some choices there. But first, if you notice, we're going to have to figure out what's going on with these external supports. All right, and the reason for that is, is because you've got them kind of coupled together here with this E, right? So when it's resting on here, that might affect what's going on at the pin here and here. So let's go ahead and let's just do the free body diagram for this piece and this piece, so the whole piece, and then we can, we can see how to find the internal loadings, okay? Because we're not going to be able to find them unless we know what's happening with these external supports. So let's go ahead. This is just like a, a frame problem right now. So let's forget about sectioning it. Let's just find what's going on at the, the E right here where they're touching and then D and B. All right. So let's do B first, I guess. So this will be B, E. All right. So there it is. And then B is going to be a pin. So if it's a pin, we're going to have an X and a Y. I don't know if those are the correct directions. I always just assume positive. Now at C, we've got this link right here. All right. So remember that's a short link. So when you have that, you're just going to have the one force. Okay. So don't be tempted to put a CX, CY here because that's not what we have. Right, so remember if you ever have a, you know, a member that just has forces that are going to act along the same line, you just want to put the one force, not, not the pin forces. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this here. Let's just call it FAC. Um, and this is at an angle, so we need to figure out what that angle is. Well, this is 4. This gives us 3, right? So basically it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So it'll be three, that'll be four. And then we've got this point E here. Well, obviously there's a force between these two, right? Because this is resting on that. So let's just call that NE, I guess. All right, and you can pick a direction. I don't know which one we should pick. Let's just go ahead and pick that direction right there. So that'll be NE. Okay, so now we've got that. Now we need an angle here. So what do we think that angle is going to be? Let's find that. All right, so as you all know, if you've seen my other videos, this is how I find that. we got X, Y frame. Let's do another frame that's rotated. So we've got this 30 degree angle given to us, right? That matches with this. So that's 30. That would be 60. This is 30. And this location corresponds to this. Okay, so that's 30 there. Um, last thing we need to do would be distances. So here to here is 3 feet, and here to here is 3 feet. Okay, now do y'all see any problems here with starting with this one? this right now is statically indeterminate, right? I got four unknowns, I only have three equations. So I'm not going to be able to solve for these yet. I need another diagram because I've got too many unknowns. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at this one next. Okay, because looking at AC is not going to tell us anything. So let's look at the other member here. And let's do that over here, I guess. Okay, so we've got D. And then we've got our force, which is 80. 
we've got the pin at D, so I'm just going to say DX, DY, positive directions. And then we've got the E right here, right where they're contacting. Now, what direction should that be? Remember, so they're interacting right here. So we have Newton's third law, so equal and opposite reaction, right? So since this one's going this way on this diagram, it's got to be going the opposite way like that. Okay, so now we've got that. And then our distances, let's put those on here. So here to here is five feet, and then down to here would be four feet. Okay, now this one looks better, right? Because this one, I've only got three unknowns. So we can go ahead and solve for this one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the moment equation at D, that'll allow me to find a in E. So let's do that. Okay, so let's do 80 first. So we've got 80 perpendicular distance here would be nine. And that one is gonna be negative, right? Gonna be clockwise, because if I hold it here, push it, notice it's going clockwise. So that's negative. We've got N E, that's pushing in the opposite direction, right? So that one's gonna be positive. N E and distance there is five. All right, so N E then is gonna be the 80 times nine over five. Let's see what that is. 144, that'll be pounds. Okay, so we've got that positive number, so correct direction here. Now we have that. Let's go ahead and mm, we don't even really need these D, X, and D, Y, and I'll show you why in just a second. So let's just go ahead and copy this value over to here. Now we can solve this one, right? Because now I've got three unknowns, three equations. So let's go ahead, do a moment at B. And let's see what we get. Counterclockwise is positive again. So on this one, we've got this NE. It's at an angle. So the only component I need to worry about though is the vertical component, right? So that would be this one because the X component goes right through B. So we just need that vertical Y component. So that equation for that would be 144 sine 30. All right, and that's going to be negative because it's clockwise. And that distance would be 6 from here to here. Next, we got FAC. So same thing with this one. The only force component we need to worry about here is the Y component because the X component would go right through B. All right, now this one would be a positive moment, though, because it's pointing upward, right? So it would go counterclockwise. So here we'll have plus FAC. And remember that's a three, four, five triangle. I want the Y component, so we're gonna have four over five. And then that distance is three. Okay, and then that equals zero. That's supposed to be an equal sign there. I'm out of room. Okay, so now we can find FAC. Let's see what that is. All right, so we get 180. It's going to be positive, so we move this over. So it's going to be a positive 180. It's pounds. It's positive, so we drew it in the correct direction. Now we've got this. Now we can find BX, BY. Um, let's go ahead and do X first, I guess. So we have positive BX, positive X component of FAC. Right, so that'll be FAC 3 times 5, or 3 over 5. And remember, FAC is 180, so you can plug that in. And then we have a negative X component here, because it's going to the left. So that'll be negative 144 cosine 30 equals 0. So now we can solve for that. Let's see what we get. Okay, so I got negative 16.7, but then we move it over, it becomes positive. All right, so 16.71, that's going to be in pounds. 
And then we got to do the y direction. All right, so we have by, and then plus the FAC component. And that y component would be 4 over 5. And then the negative y component here. So negative 144 sine 30 equals 0. Now I know what FAC is though, right? It's 180. So let's plug that in. And then we can get BY. All right, so this one, if we do this, we get a positive number. We're going to move it over so it becomes negative 72 pounds. Okay, so now I've got my reaction forces. By the way, if you're wondering how we're getting the, the, like the 3 over 5 and the 4 over 5, we're using this triangle. So the way I always remember it, if we're looking for, say, the x-axis, the x-component, you want to find the leg of the triangle that is parallel to that axis and divide it by the hypotenuse. All right, so 3, this length here, is parallel to x, so we're going to do 3 over 5. y, the 4, is parallel to the y-axis, so we do 4 over 5. Okay, and then that gives you the, the correct angle. Okay, so now we've got those values there. Now we can go ahead and do the internal forces. And let's go ahead and start with F. Okay, so remember I said over here, I was like, we don't even need to find those, so let's not bother with that. The reason why I said that is because we can either choose to do this section or this section. All right, well, this section doesn't have as much stuff, right? Because we don't have this E point and we don't have D. So if I use this right section right here, I don't even need to know what's going on at D. And that's why I didn't need to solve for those. Okay, so let's choose this section here because it'll be easier. Less, less equations to deal with. Okay, so let's draw this out. So we have 80 pounds is external and then let's make the internal ones pink so we're gonna have a normal force that's normal to the cross-section I always draw it going out we're gonna have a shear all right so let's just say it's this way um, and then we're gonna have a bending moment so let's just call it MF okay so now we've got that and then at this point now it's just like an equilibrium problem, right? And this distance here is two feet. Okay, so three unknowns, we have three equations. Let's go ahead and let's define our coordinate system first. Let's say this is X, this is Y. That'll be easy. Okay, so let's look at the X first. Okay, I got positive V negative 80. Those are going to equal 0. All right, so V then at point F is 80, and that'll be pounds. So it's one of your answers. Now let's do the Y direction. Only thing we have here is N, right? So N has to equal 0. So that was easy. And then finally, we got your moment. So let's take the moment at point F. That's positive. Remember, this is point F right there. And with that one, the, the V and the N, we don't need to worry about. We do have this bending moment here. We have to put that in. I assumed it was positive, so let's add M sub F. And then we have the moment due to the external force of 80 pounds. So we got to include that. So that'll be 80 times the distance, which is 2. And is that positive or negative? It's going to be negative, right? Because if I have it this way, it's clockwise. All right, so with that, your moment there at point F is going to be a positive 160, and that'll be pound foot. All right, so here's that answer. Okay, not too bad, right? And picking this section saved us some time. That way we didn't have to worry about finding dx, dy, and all that. Okay, so this one's done. Now let's come over here. So for this one, you can either pick this right side or you can pick the left side. 
I'm going to do the left side just because it looks a little bit easier. So let's do that. Okay, so if we draw our diagram, we're sectioning it here. We've got the pen at B. All right. So we've got our BX, BY. So BX was 16.71. And then by was negative 72. All right, so you have two choices here. You can leave your arrow the same that you had it here, but you have to include the negative, or you can flip the arrow and put a positive 72. It's up to you. I like to leave everything the way I had it, though. So I'm going to put up and put negative 72. All right, some people don't like doing that, but that's, that's what I like to do, just to stay consistent. Okay, so now we've got this, and then now let's do the internal loads. All right, so we have N. We're going to have V, and then let's do the moment. And this is at point G. Okay. Now this one, we have our standard XY system, so that'll be good. Uh, and I'm just going to do the X equation first. All right, we have positive 16.71 plus n, set it to zero. So n then is going to be negative 16.71 pounds. Negative just means I drew this in the wrong direction. Okay, so really it's kind of it's compression here. It's pushing in. All right, and then let's do y. So I've got the negative 72 plus V equals zero. So shear then is a positive 72. So we did the right direction there. And then finally we need our moment. So let's take the moment at G. Or in this case, you could take it at B. They both have two unknowns, two forces going through them. So either one would work. Um, we got to put this MG in here. I assumed it was positive. And then the only force we need to worry about is the 72. Okay, so this distance, we didn't write that down, 1.5 feet. Okay, so it's going to be negative. So it's a negative moment, but the force is negative 72, and then the distance is 1.5. All right, so this becomes positive. You move it over, it becomes a negative. And then we have 72 times 1.5. Helps to put in the right number, so that's 108. All right, so 108 pound. But negative, that's because it should be going clockwise. Okay, so that is how you find those internal loads. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So it's basically just kind of like a frames and machines problem from statics up here. And then once you get in here, you just look internally. The key though is you want to pick the easy side for the, your, your section, right? So this side is going to be easier than this side. All right, so always take a look at your choices and pick the easier one. Otherwise, you're going to spend time doing equations you don't really need to do. Hopefully y'all like that one. I will see y'all next time.